Good afternoon. Welcome to Flower School Live, not on a Wednesday, on a Friday, here in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. I am in the Westin Kiernan, and I'm at the Outstanding It's pretty darn fabulous. So I see we're having a little bit of issues with connectivity. Hopefully we can stay live as we go along. If you're here, give me a sign so I know that you are watching because we're gonna be live. We're gonna talk about all these new fabulous varieties that are on display. There are some amazing things that I wanna show you. And we'll take, oh, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour to walk through and look at everything. Because there's so much to see. You can look around the room behind me. It just goes for on and on and on. So there's so much to see. And a few of you have joined in. Glad to have you here. I know Susie's online with us so that she can help answer any questions you may have. David's here as well. And so he'll be watching to see if there are questions that come up. Hi, Valerie. You know, it is so cold in here. See, I have my sweater on. It is so cold in here. There is not a lot of fragrance. You know, I'm going to try turning around and seeing if it's better if we go vertical. What do you guys think? You can't turn your phone while recording, so I guess we can't go vertical. We're going to have to go horizontal, so that's the way it's going to be. So everyone, if you need a close-up of something, type it in there and I'll try and get closer. But I'm going to flip it around now so that you're not looking at me because I'm not what this is all about. We're talking about all these amazing flowers. So I'm going to flip the camera here, make it go the other direction. There we go. And let's start looking. So right at the very front, we've got a beautiful new variety of Alstroemeria. And if you've seen some of our Tulip Tuesdays, you know there are many, many, many different ways to use the Alstroemeria. Hi, Michael. Glad you're here. And you've seen this room firsthand. Oh, Valerie, yes, he is an amazing chef. Beautiful yellow roses. This is called, let's see, Rise and Shine. And it does shine. And, you know, these roses have now been here for four or five days already and still looking absolutely gorgeous. There's many new varieties of chrysanthemums. Now, I'll give you a size perspective. There's my hand, but that color, oh my goodness. And then they do have mini carnations, lots of new varieties coming in. This one's called Atlantis and it has long, long laterals, very, very nice heads. And then a newer color of status with this soft pinky hue. It's called Tessa Lavender. And then this is one that I loved. Oh my gosh, take a look at this. It's called Achillea Sassy Summer Sangria. And Summer Sangria, there you go. It's beautiful. And again, very strong, sturdy stems. Back to another status. This one is a Limonium beautiful peachy color. So there's quite a few filler flowers. And then back to the chrysanthemums, see a nice soft pinky lavender, almost a touch of mauve. And then a beautiful, odd, multi-hued, look at that chrysanthemum. Each floret is stunning. Going from that mauve to a burgundy with a hint of yellow, then this is a new series that is going to be a favorite. This is the first one. It's called Blue Ocean is the series. And then the actual name is Opal. And look at that soft lavender with the green center. And again, very long laterals, super healthy foliage. It's going to be a favorite for designing and obviously long lasting. Then we have a butterscotch hue, 
There we go. And then look at this little guy. Is that too cute? I love that. Nice spray mum. Again, size prepare, you know, promotion there so you can see the proportion. Okay, here is another of the Blue Ocean. And this one's called Jade. What do you think of that? Is that going to be a popular hue? I think so. I think that one's going to be great. Then on to bronze. And look at these pinky. You don't see true pinkish chrysanthemums often. And that one's beautiful. Spray rose. Glad you like it, Bernadette. Wait till you see this next one. This next one is maybe one of my favorites. It's the Blue Ocean series again. And this is called Sapphire. And it's all natural. There's no dye. It's not tinted. But it is almost a silver gray. It is one that gets that moody color palette that's so popular. Again, a favorite, big white chrysanthemums. And then the ball chrysanthemums, they almost look like a dahlia. Pretty good size, almost the size of my hand. You can see the proportion there. Spray rose. Another spray, palm. And then this rose is called peach wave. Now it's funny as we go through these, we're looking at the ones that did not get ribbons. These were not chosen as winners, but aren't they fabulous? In my book, they're still a winner. Sunflowers, another blue ocean, this time really intense eggplant purple. This one is called Coral, which I thought was an interesting name. So it's Blue Ocean Coral, but it is an eggplant hue. Then a spray rose. Another sunflower, but interesting face. More chrysanthemums. We'll finish up the mum aisle, and then we're going to scooch over to the rose aisle, because there's many, many different roses coming up. Look at this chrysanthemum. This is another larger one, size of my palm. But it's almost all like the center florets, not as many of the radial outer florets. Spray. Back to the blue ocean. This one is called purple sapphire. So there was the grade, and now this one is a little more lavender. Then another of that pink mauve hue. Look at that center with a bit of burgundy. I think customers are going to really like these. I think they're going to be a popular flower. I'm anxious to see them show up in our wholesalers so that we can enjoy them. Make sure we get them into the classroom because we have to have them. Look at all these new varieties of chrysanthemums. Now this one looks much like some of the others, but the coloration is a little different. You know, you may have seen this multi-hued autumn chrysanthemum before, but it's a little bit different. Pinky status, purple status. I always love the status when it actually gets the flowers, the white on it. Isn't that beautiful? And look at the density of those heads. White mini carnations, and then another Alstromeria, so long lasting. Spray rose, and then, okay, one of my favorites. Look at this Dianthus. It's a sweet William type flower, but the size of these heads, bigger than my hand, it's enormous. It is so big, and They've been sitting here for a week and still look pretty darn fabulous. So, okay, we've done one table. We have more tables to go. Let's see, we've got carnations. This rusty orange hue, I think would be pretty popular. It's called Majesta, Majesta Dianthus. And I think that hue is one that people are going to like. An antique variety called Wine 
cover. Let's see if I can get a picture closer. There we go. And then I'm going to sneak across because we're just going to do this table both sides at the same time. Look at this soft, more rustic, muted, the intensity color of yellow. And then one that's a little bit brighter and happier. So some new carnations to be looking forward to. Soft butter yellow, creamy white. Students recognize this. You see this in the classroom quite often, Oregonia. It's an updated version. And then this, I think, is going to be amazing. It's Piaris, but look how dense and green. You've seen Piaris in many of my videos in the past, but this one almost looks like a bush. It's quite amazing. Then we have the Hypericum, a new coral, that deep burgundy, green, ivory, coral, and peach. So several. Then we get to roses. I'm going to kind of go down so you can see there's so many. But look at those heads and such a high petal count. This is one of my favorites, this deep, intense orange. This is called Naranjo. And it's opening out beautiful. And then you look across and a little more muted, complex hue. Talk about head size and petal count. Look at those. They are huge and beautiful. So I think there's going to be no shortage of amazing, fabulous flowers coming up into the world. It's just a matter of getting them in production, getting them out to the wholesalers, out to the retailers, and then out to the consumer so that they can enjoy. Gorgeous red, very lovely, coming across. Perfect for autumn. High petal count, big head, nice cup shape. This is called Phoenix. Look at that. I adore it. Down into the pinks. I think Barbie is going to be making the pinks a super popular. And we're going to need all variations of pink to be able to pull that off. It's a lovely, intense, deep orange on this one. And then over to yellow. Then one that you may have seen me post yesterday, um, and it's called Veggie. And it got a lot of comments. People either love it or hate it. It's a very unique rose. It's large. You can see it fills my palm. The open, I'm going to pull it out so you can see. The open face shows the interior completely. And then look at the petals. I mean, it looks like little baby cabbages almost. Absolutely amazing. I love the look of the back. I love the interest of the center. It's going to definitely be one that you either hate or you adore, but whatever, it's truly going to be a conversation starter because people are not going to be sure that that could even be a rose. What is that? So name of that one is Veggie. We've seen smaller varieties of that in a spray. This is the first I've seen of it as a full size. More roses. Let's kind of scooch along here so that you can see another variety or grower of the veggie rose. Same rose, different grower, different farm. In this exhibit, growers from around the world bring what they think is going to be the next great, big, wonderful thing, and they show it off. They go out in their fields, they go out in their greenhouses, and they pick a variety of blooms. And then they have to ship them here to Phoenix, Arizona, where they're received at one of the wholesalers. 
brought in and then they're processed. And they're all displayed in the same syndicate sales vase and they all are processed using Chrysal preserving products and care products. And then they're all set out. Then they have six judges that come through and they evaluate them on the face of the bloom, the stem, the foliage, the overall presentation, and then they're awarded best in show, best in class. You know, there are different prizes, which we're going to do the prizes last. So hang with me. We've got to get through and show you the ones that didn't win. And you can see these are all so grand. How can they not be winners? But not everybody gets a trophy. Not everybody wins. It's not a quick award for showing up. This is definitely an award for quality. So we'll come back at the end and I'll show you all of the award winners. There are so many varieties, though, to take a look at. This is an interesting hue. Look at that. It's a spray rose. So many, many rose growers brought in. Notice how many white are included. Quite a bit of white and then the creamy. Bit of the peachy. And then we'll go on around to the next table. Take a look at this. Alstromeria. Chrysanthemums, pink, white, lavender, mauve, lighter pink. You can see chrysanthemum growers are really expanding because they are an on-trend bloom. So many different choices. Look at the intensity of that. Oh, so great for autumn. And then a more muted, a little more complex. Look at the contrast between the white and the ivory. They work well together. Lavender. And we're coming up on one of my new faves as well. Look at these micro. Look how little, itty tiny, not even the size of my thumbnail. And there you have many varieties of these now. I can't even imagine how they do all the hybridizing and create these things. Here's another micro. Look, itty bitty, tiny little things. And then one last micro over here that I just thought was delightful. And again, very tiny, but great coloration. I think they'll be popular. Okay, let's go on down. What else have we got here? Oh my goodness, more chrysanthemums. We'll start going a little bit faster so you can see. So we've got time to definitely visit on the winners. Ranunculus. Baby's breath. Still on trend. Sweet peas. Look at these, how beautiful they are. And they're a week old. And more ranunculus. stock. Okay, I have a new one for you to share. It's pretty cool. This is Veronica. That's not it. Look at this. It's called Stella. And it's very spiky and hard, really spiky and hard. And the stem is flat. See that? Look at that. It's a very odd shaped stem. And I understand that they will dry and be almost like an everlasting flower. 
but it's called Stella. This is winter Stella. I don't know if there's a summer Stella, but winter Stella. And I am just falling in love with them. I think they're going to be a popular bloom. More Veronica, Oryngium, Ranunculus. These are huge. Put my hand in there so you can see. It's the size of my palm. Sweet peas. Then this baby's breath is an incredibly interesting variety. I'm gonna see if I can get a picture of it here. It just has a very unique head and it's very, very firm and not quite as fragrant as some baby's breath. Sweet peas, oryngium. I think this was the one and only bunch of tulips. And you know I am enamored with tulips, so I was sort of surprised, but I think that's the one and only bunch of tulips. Then we're back to roses. Let's kind of flip through these on our way to the winners. A nice muted yellow. Interesting shapes. Notice how those petals almost triangulate. And then this has that head that's somewhat like a heart rose. See how it ruffles there in the center? And the question that I saw pop in is how do you take care of things? And I see Susie, you're getting a good answer in there. Thank you. The key is how you care for them when you get them home, period. And that's something we teach in class from day one, how to make your flowers last as long as possible. And first you have to choose the right flowers. And that's why I spend time at exhibits like this, looking at the flowers, watching how they age. So, and I'll be back again tomorrow and look at them because I want to see them as they get older to see which ones seem to hold the best, which ones seem to fade quicker so that I have that knowledge. So choosing the right flower, then when you get it home, going through the full care and handling, Oh, look at this one. Oh my gosh, interrupting myself. That is just so grand. But getting them home and going through full care and handling, taking care of individual stems. This is another unique spray rose. Kind of looks like that veggie, but this one is called Princess Pinku and very unique shape. If you go to our website, flowerschool.com, and you go to the resource library, you'll find an entire section that's just on flower care and handling. Ah, see where it has started to get a little bit of botrytis. That's what I always look for. Just what is happening with these flowers? How well are they going to hold up? And how many days before something goes wrong? So many, look at the stems on that one. They are huge, absolutely tall and gorgeous. Another soft pink down into the muted hues. On my almost last row, so we'll head back up to the winners. If you know somebody who wants to see who won in each category, go ahead and share this out, tag them. Enrique, they did. They were a spray rose, so there was four, five, even six to a bud. This is another veggie, but this is the single version, so it's one rose per stem. Then look at the variegation on this. Almost looks like it's been artificially painted, but that's all natural. Then coming on down. There were just a few. Here's a lily. And then callas. And then one more lily. It's really amazing. Look at that double head. It's like a rose lily. This one is called rose lily Aisha. Rose lily Aisha. And that coloration from green to white 
going to be super popular. It's fragrant, but not as fragrant as like a stargazer lily where it's almost intoxicating. But that one is, I think, one of my favorites because that soft green would just blend on with anything. So now let's look at the winners. They're all set on their own table. We're going to do by category first. So this is the winner is called Aloha and it is the outstanding rose best in class. So the best in class for roses was Aloha and it is grown by Dream Farms, which I'm not familiar with them, but you might want to look them up. Dream Farms grows the Aloha Rose and huge petal count, large head. You can see it's the size of my palm. And then that color gradation, pretty grand. Best in class, this Veronica. Look how strong that is. It's called Pink Victory. It's grown by Floral Chain Direct. Has that vibrant green tip and then down to the hot pink. It truly needs a Barbie party. It is ready. Best in class for the carnation is Novia. And it's a kind of a peachy pink. Head size average. I wouldn't say it's large or small but a very nice cup to the bloom, okay? Then skipping across, because I don't want to show you the grand prize yet. So this is best in class again. It's called Bridal Veil, and it's a spray rose, and each stem has many roses on it. So this is a spray rose, so it's got one, two, three, four, five, six blooms on that particular stem. So it's a very lush spray rose. Best in class, Winter Spirit. It's a variety of ilex grown at Sun Valley Farms. And look at the abundance of berries on that. I think this is going to be a super favorite for the holiday season. And uh, Winter Spirit. Sun Valley Group, Best in Class, Victorian Red. Interesting petals, how it cups out. This one is grown by Dream Farms. Best in Class, Chrysanthemum. It's called Bonita Orange, Spray Rose. And it's grown by Royal Van Zanten. Best in Class, Alstromeria. I think Alstromeria is having a day again. It's coming back on trend. Grown by Flores de Funza La Plaza Letta. And um, very long lasting, very, very fresh, very fabulous. So are you ready to see the best overall, the best in show, the grand prize winner? Congratulations to Sun Valley Farms right here in the United States, California to be specific. They are the grand winner. It got best in class and then best in show. It's called Amistad, A-M-I-S-T-A-D, Amistad. And it is a pollen-free double lily. I mean, how cool is that? Now, I was talking to Lane earlier, and he owns Sun Valley. It is started with the rose lily stock, but it is not truly a rose lily. It's a double lily, and it's pollen-free. Now, you can see little bits of spots where there's a pollen, but not like you see where you're having that pollen get all over everything. Won't these be exquisite for weddings? You don't have to worry about the pollen staining, staining a dress, and yet you get that multiple petal count. So, so, so fabulous. So now you've seen it. You've seen the room. There's so many blooms here. If you ever have the opportunity to see an exhibit like this, please do. It is worth the time, worth the effort, and quite fascinating just to see 
what is available in the flower world and what's coming up, what's new. So best in show, pollen free, double lily, Amistad from Sun Valley Farms. Congratulations, Lane and team. I know you worked hard to get to this and I'm so excited for you. And to all of you that joined me today on a Friday, I know, right in the middle of everything, but I couldn't wait. I wanted to share this all with you and the easiest way is to go live and let it out. So if you enjoyed it, please share this video, let other people see what's going on. And we'll see you all next week live, Wednesday, three o'clock Pacific time, our normal. And we'll be celebrating because I'm going back home and school starting on Monday. Yes, it's back to school time. Hey, Eleanor, good to see you. And yes, you would have loved all these flowers. It is so much. Although I had to pull David away because he's still watching the bicycles. Well, I think they're done now. But um, yeah, we had to schedule this around the bicycles so that we could do that. Thanks to all of you for joining me. Thanks, Susie, for being there to help greet. And I will see you all next time because time for me to go out and do something I love with my flower friends. Bye for now.